Ever been so angry at someone you just wanted to break the whole internet? Software developer Azo Kuchelu did just that back in 2016, all because of a falling out with messaging app Kick. Azo was like the Stephen King of open source code. He'd written a whopping 273 code packages that developers all around the world were using, and he shared these packages with them through a program called NPM. NPM is like a huge digital library for code. It's a package manager that developers publish their code to so that others can use that code in their own apps, because developers are lazy people that hate writing code themselves. In fact, NPM boasts over 1.6 million packages, making it the largest package registry on the planet. You might not know this, but nearly every tech company, Facebook, Netflix, Google, everyone, uses these packages in some way. Sometimes the packages are very basic, but like the foundation of a building, they're crucial to keeping the internet standing. Remove one of these packages and everything could come crashing down like a game of Jenga. And that's precisely what happened in March 2016, all because of a little package called Kick. Kuchelu had written this nifty little package to kickstart new coding projects, and he gave it the short but fitting name Kick. He only realised that this was also the name of a somewhat popular messaging app when he received an email from Kick Interactive's patent agent asking him to rename his package. Azza, deciding to stand up to the corporate machine, responded with a blunt no, and when Kick started hinting at legal action, things got real spicy real fast. Kick tattled to NPM, who decided to play Solomon and give Kick the package to Kick the company. Azza was having none of it. He felt betrayed by NPM, so he removed all 273 of his packages, proudly announcing in a blog post that he had liberated his modules. And that is when the internet started to break. And I don't mean in a fun Kim Kardashian sort of way. You see, one of Kuchelu's packages was this little thing called Leftpad. It was like an espresso shot of code, just 11 lines long and it did one simple thing. It added spaces at the start of a string or zeros at the start of a number. And like a regular dose of caffeine, these 11 lines would cause a big headache if someone were to take them away. Because it turns out a bunch of important packages relied on Leftpad, and other packages relied on those packages, like a code-based game of telephone. Developers at big tech companies like Facebook were using Leftpad without even really knowing it. When they tried to build their apps, they just got an error message instead. For a few brief chaotic hours, web development across the globe screeched to a halt. Developers for Facebook, Netflix and Google couldn't run some of their apps. Even projects like the popular front-end framework React, which is maintained by Facebook and used by thousands, experience build issues. Thankfully, the development community swooped in, republishing the packages and saving the day. NPM reinstated Leftpad within two and a half hours, averting any further chaos. The fallout from this digital drama led many developers to rethink whether they should rely on simple packages like Leftpad, or just write that sort of code themselves. NPM and Kick published lengthy soul-searching blog posts about the whole ordeal, and eventually NPM made changes to prevent a repeat performance. But the real moral of this story? The internet, this vast digital landscape that we all depend on, is held together not by the massive tech companies with bottomless pockets, but by the tireless efforts of lone developers coding basic functionality in their spare time. So the next time you're browsing the web, streaming your favourite show, or swiping right on that dating app, Take a moment to appreciate the unsung heroes of the internet, the coders like Azza, who've built this digital Jenga tower we all call home. And let's hope nobody else decides to pull out a crucial block anytime soon.